So genetic testing can usually happen late in the first trimester, so somewhere around 11 to 13 weeks. And we offer a few different tests. So um, one of them is called the first look. It's based on the idea that babies that have Down syndrome have a thickened fold behind their neck. So the first thing we do is an ultrasound, and the purpose of that ultrasound is really to look for that fold behind the baby's neck. The second thing is that babies who have Downs tend to have moms with certain chemical markers that are higher or lower than in moms that don't carry a baby with Downs. So the second part are those chemical markers. And so we put the ultrasound results along with those markers, put it into an algorithm and come back and say your risk of Downs. So we may say the risk of Downs is one in 10,000. That's really low, probably nothing else to do. Or we might say the risk of Downs is one in three, and if that's so, then we need to do additional testing because this is just a screen. Um, the other form of genetic testing that you may be offered is called non-invasive prenatal screening, and there's lots of brand names that go with this. So you might have heard of Maternity 21 or Panorama or Harmony. It's all um, a type of non-invasive prenatal screening. That's based on the idea that the baby, it's actually the placenta, sheds cells into mom's blood supply. And so with just a blood draw, you can um, figure out if the baby has some of the most common chromosomal disorders. So Down syndrome is the one we know. It also looks at trisomy 13 and 18. And people tend to like it because it will tell you the gender. But how do you decide whether you want to get this test or not? And I think that there are three groups of people. Group one would say, if the baby had a serious chromosomal disorder, I may consider ending the pregnancy, and that group should definitely get the test. Group two would say, I wouldn't end the pregnancy, but I would want to know so I could emotionally prepare to take care of a child that may have special needs, and that group should get the test. Group three would say, it's not gonna change anything. I wouldn't end the pregnancy. I don't need to know to emotionally prepare. Um, what will be, will be, and I would not get an amniocentesis anyway. So it's important to remember that when we do this genetic testing in the first trimester, it's just a screening test. You actually need to do an amniocentesis where we take a very thin needle, stick it into the belly, into the uterus, into the fluid around the baby, send that off, and that gives us the best answer in terms of what's going, along, going on with the baby. I give the example of a patient I had many years ago who had a positive screen for Downs. Her risk was one in 74 and she was terrified, but she didn't want to get an amniocentesis. So she spent the entire pregnancy being horrified that her baby might have Downs. And I kept saying, well, the chances are greater than not that the baby doesn't, and that was not of comfort to her. So I think it's really important to think about how am I going to use this information? Because if you're not going to get the confirmation with an amniocentesis, um, then it's probably not worth doing the screening test in the first place.